Star Wars 7x7, episode 2771. Chapter 6 of the Book of Boba Fett is called From the Desert Comes a Stranger. This is a full spoiler breakdown of the highlights, which are increasingly crazy in the sense of, is this really the Book of Boba Fett or something else entirely different? Punch it! <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, at the end of chapter 5 of the Book of Boba Fett, we see the Mandalorian say, I'm gonna go visit a little friend. I don't think any of us actually expected that this would happen in chapter 6, that he would actually go to the planet where Grogu was hanging out, actually see Grogu, and actually see Luke Skywalker. We had both Luke Skywalker and Grogu in this episode and for a significant chunk of time. This is absolutely one of the most unexpected results for the Book of Boba Fett <laughs> in this whole season. Not to mention the appearance of Ahsoka Tano as well. So good gracious, this really is becoming sort of a Mandalorian season 2.5 in addition to whatever the Book of Boba Fett is doing. Although it sure does seem like they're setting up the possibility of Grogu rejecting the Jedi Academy and going back to the Mandalorian, which is pretty insane that they decided to do that. Although, I guess if you're thinking about continuity and knowing that Luke was actually building the first building of what would be his Jedi Academy, that presumably is the thing that we saw destroyed in flashbacks in The Last Jedi and also in The Rise of Kylo Ren comic book series. Honestly, this is just crazy where this seems to all be going. And Ahsoka taking off and Luke saying, will I see you again? Like, yeah, there's something, you know, rather amazing that they're trying to do, I think, with the Book of Boba Fett by weaving in these other storylines. I don't necessarily know if they had to do that, but clearly they've got some kind of agenda about introducing all of this. And of course, it was Dave Filoni who directed this episode. It makes kind of sense with the Jedi training happening and whatnot. And Oh yeah, also Luke apparently took Yoda's lightsaber. Somehow he got that, I guess, presumably at the end of Return of the Jedi or, you know, when he left Dagobah. Yeah, uh, lots of unanswered stuff about that too. How cute was that Beskar chainmail shirt also for that matter, huh? All right, so let's talk about the actual book of Boba Fett in the sense of what the story is that we're supposed to be being told about what's going on on Tatooine. It kicks off with another surprise appearance. Timothy Oliphant is back as Cobb Vanth and sets the pikes running, which was a pretty exciting opener for sure. And it makes sense for Cobb Vanth to get involved and it made sense to get the Mandalorian involved and the tying of the two of them together makes sense. So yeah, you can see these pieces coming into play. And then of course there is the shock character arrival at the end of the episode. Cad Bane shows up for the first time in live action, voiced also by Corey Burton who voiced him in the Clone Wars, which is really awesome that they did that. And even though Cad Bane and Boba Fett had had some previous associations and previous positive associations, as far as we knew, there is a story in the Clone Wars Legacy, the unproduced episodes of the Clone Wars, where Cad Bane and Boba Fett ultimately <laughs> ended up fighting against each other, having a duel. All we know about that is that somehow Boba Fett's helmet ended up dented as a result of the duel, but we don't know any more of the details other than they obviously survived. And it seems like whatever situation happened there that put them on opposing sides, Cad Bane still is carrying around some feeling about that, talking about how Boba Fett worked for the Empire and all this stuff. So yeah, he shows up and is working with the Pike Syndicate and says, yeah, I'll pay you guys what Boba Fett was going to pay you if you just leave things alone. And with the shooting of Cobb Vanth and Deputy, uh, what's his name, Deputy Scott. <laughs> it seems like Scott got enough blaster fire that he's probably gone, but Cobb Vanth looks like he just took one shot in the shoulder and they're calling for doctors and medics, so I wouldn't necessarily count him out of this fight just yet. And then of course there's the bombing at Madame Garza's place. Fun use of Cantonos throughout the episode too, for that matter. So we basically have 
kind of a triple cliffhanger situation at the end of this episode. We don't know which way Grogu is going to go. We don't know who has survived the bombing at the sanctuary. We don't know whether Cobb Vanth is alive. And I guess a quadruple situation because we know that he's called for a meeting of every able-bodied fighter in what used to be Mos Pelgo, what's now called Freetown, which is another nod to the novels because that's what they called it in Chuck Wendig's Aftermath novels, so that's fun. But we only have one episode left of this, so how on earth are they going to tie all this up? I mean, they moved a ton of pike fighters into Mos Espa, and we don't have any foot soldiers yet, unless it turns out that, you know, Cobb Vance survives and rallies the townspeople of Freetown to go join Boba Fett's cause. Maybe Peli Mato is able to rustle up some people to resist. Yeah, this seems like it's going to have to have a couple of more inputs to enable Boba Fett to overcome this particular thing. But we're probably looking at a showdown between Boba Fett and Cad Bane now, not just considering the possibility of Boba Fett and the Pike leader having some sort of reconnection and revisiting the whole Tuscan slaughtering situation. And there's also the question of the Trandoshans and the Clatoonians and the Aqualish and if they are going to stay out of the fray or if the bombing at the sanctuary is going to make them think, no, we probably need to get into this whole situation because as Boba Fett said, they know that the Pikes are going to give them a worse deal than Boba Fett would, but the bombing in the sanctuary happened on Boba Fett's turf. It's not on any of their turfs. So yeah, they don't exactly have a vested interest to get involved yet in the situation either. So we have a ton of open questions and cliffhangers leading into next week's final episode of the season. I don't know how they're going to resolve this, but I'd love to hear what you think. How do you think they're going to wrap this all up in a bow? Wherever you see a comment section along with this episode, chime in there, please. I would love to hear your thoughts. But if there isn't one, if you're just listening to this on your favorite podcatcher app, then head over to SW7x7.com and look for episode 2771 and drop a comment there and let me know what you think. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.